How has the genetics of the Netherlands changed over time and what is the genetic makeup of the country today? What impact did the Romans, Germanic peoples, the Vikings, the Dutch colonial period and various other episodes down through history have on the genetics of the Netherlands? Now the word Netherlands literally means lower countries, which is in reference to its low elevation and flat topography. The people are much taller than the landscape though, as Dutch people are the tallest in the world. Outside of the Netherlands itself, people with Dutch ancestry are found across the world, notably in places such as the United States, South Africa, Canada and Australia. Some of the best artists in history have also been Dutch, including Rembrandt and Van Gogh or Van Gogh, two of my favourite artists. Now linguistically, there is a connection between the Dutch language and the English language. Both are West Germanic languages and Dutch is generally considered the easiest language for English speakers to learn. And in fact, the Frisian languages, which are spoken in parts of the Netherlands and Germany, are actually the closest languages to English thanks to the Anglo-Saxon migrations. If you look at Frisian words for welcome at the top of this table and good morning at the bottom, you can see the similarities with English. And Friesland is one of the 12 provinces of the Netherlands today, to the north of the country, which is named after the Frisians. But what about the genetic history of the Netherlands? Well, the ancient genetic history of the country is quite similar to other Western European countries. Firstly, there was Western hunter-gatherers, early Western hunter-gatherers, then there was early European farmers from around Anatolia, and then there was steppe ancestry that's connected to migrations from the Pontic Caspian steppe associated with the Yamnaya culture. A few fascinating ancient cultures are worth mentioning in the ancient history of the Netherlands. One is the Funnel Beaker culture which existed from around 4300 BC to about 2800. This ancient people gets its name from its characteristic ceramics and beakers with funnel-shaped tops, which were often found in dolmen burials. Around the end of the funnel beaker period, however, two other cultures arose. One was the Corded Bear Complex that appeared around 3000 BC. It covered vast parts of northern, central and eastern Europe. Named after the cord-like impressions of its pottery, the Y-DNA haplogroup R1A was the most common amongst corded bear men. Shortly after the rise of the corded bear people, there was another connected culture known as the Bellbeaker people that arose around 2800 BC. These Bellbeakers are again named after their pottery and the Y-DNA haplogroup R1B was very common amongst Bellbeaker men, with this haplogroup still found in Dutch people today as we'll see later in the video. But what about later episodes? Well, during the Iron Age, there is two main episodes that are worth highlighting. Firstly, there was a migration from southern Scandinavia into the land we call Northern Germany today, and this probably had some impact on the land we call the Netherlands today as well, with various Germanic groups tracing their origins back to southern Scandinavia. Secondly, we know that the Celts were one of the main groups in Europe during the Iron Age, and the Latin culture associated with the Celts would have had some influence in parts of the Netherlands, especially in the south. The Celts from Gaul were associated with various haplogroups, including the Y-DNA haplogroup R1B U152. The Celts, however, seem to have a limited genetic impact on the Netherlands, and any influence would have been mainly in the south. The Romans soon arrived, however, with the Roman Empire expanding into the Netherlands in the 1st century BC, particularly in the southern regions once again, where the province of Germania Inferior was established. The Frisii were a tribe that occupied the northern coastal part of the Netherlands at this time, and this tribe seemed to retain a reasonable level of independence during this period. While the Roman presence brought new cultural influences to the Netherlands, the genetic impact of Roman rule appears to have been relatively modest compared to other episodes. Southern parts of the Netherlands may have seen a small increase in ancestry from Southern Europe or the Near East during this time, however the overall genetic contribution of these groups to the Dutch population was limited. The collapse of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century AD triggered a period known as the Migration Period. This was a period of movement within Europe and many Germanic peoples came into the Netherlands. During this time, the area where the Frisii tribe lived seemed to be largely deserted for a period, perhaps due to piracy and environmental factors, before people from northwestern Germany and southwestern Denmark moved into this area a little later. They adopted the original name of the land though, becoming the New Frisians. They would go on to form the Frisian Kingdom between 600 and 734 AD, before this was conquered by the Kingdom of the Franks in the 8th century. 
The Saxons were just to the east as well, and how distinct all these groups were is debated, but we know that the main YDNA haplogroup amongst the Franks was R1B U106. This haplogroup is still pretty common in the Netherlands today, as we'll see later, and it is associated with Germanic peoples in general. But what impact did the Vikings have on the genetics of the Netherlands? Well, before we look at that, I would like to quickly thank my Patreon members for voting in a recent poll for this video topic. And I will make a video on all the topics people voted for. If you would like to vote on what video topics I make videos on, please check out my Patreon page, I'll put a link in the description below, or you can go to Celtic History Decoded on Patreon. Thanks for your support, and now on with the video. Now, during the Viking Age, the Netherlands experienced raids and settlements by Scandinavian Vikings, particularly along the northern and coastal regions, and they made their mark genetically as well. A 2020 study published in Nature Communications, for instance, that looked at the Dutch population structure in general, found that ancestry profiles show a small but significant contribution of Danish haplotypes in the north and west of the Netherlands, a possible vestige of Viking raids in coastal areas in the 9th and 10th centuries. They add that from their data, it appears that the modern Dutch genome has indeed been partially shaped by historical Viking admixture. This Danish Viking contact is contemporaneous with a critical period in the establishment of the modern Dutch genome from other outside forces, from around 1000 to 1100 AD. So although small, the Danish Vikings made their mark genetically on the Netherlands, but what about more recent events in the genetic history of the Netherlands? Well, the early modern period, from around the 16th to the 18th centuries, saw the Netherlands emerge as a major European power, particularly during the Dutch Golden Age of the 17th century. During this time, the Dutch Republic became a centre of trade, finance and colonisation, and its cities attracted immigrants from across Europe. The Dutch colonial empire, which spanned the Americas, Africa and Asia, and which was led by companies such as the Dutch East India Company, also resulted in some new genetic influences. Some Dutch settlers who returned from colonies in places like Indonesia, Suriname and the Caribbean brought with them some small amounts of genetic diversity from these regions, although the overall genetic impact of colonialism on the Dutch population was limited. The Netherlands has also been a refuge for some people fleeing religious persecution at different times, such as the Huguenots or Huguenots from France and the Sephardic Jews from Spain and Portugal. But what about the genetic structure of the Netherlands today, and what haplogroups are most common amongst Dutch people? Well, a 2020 study published in the European Journal of Human Genetics found that R1B is the most common Y-DNA haplogroup in the Netherlands, followed by I. To be more specific, 62% of people belong to R in general, most belong to R1B, but some belong to R1A as well. As far as the most common subclass of R1B, 15.1% of people in this study belong to R1B L48, 13.8% to R1B M405, which confusingly is also known as R1B U106, and 9% to R1B S116. On the other hand, 27.8% of people in this study belong to IM170. This study also modelled the regional variability of these haplogroups. IM170 is more common in the northeast of the country and the northern coastal areas, for instance, which would make sense as I is a common haplogroup in Scandinavia and amongst the Vikings historically. The other subclans of R1B also show some regional variation as well, as you can see. This general pattern is mirrored in other studies as well. This is the Y-DNA breakdown of the Netherlands from Eupedia, with R1B the most common haplogroup on the Y-DNA side, followed by I1. They also note that R1B U106 is high in regions such as Frisia, at around 42%. On the maternal side, H is the most common mitochondrial haplogroup in the Netherlands, including H1, H3 and H5. Other relatively common mitochondrial haplogroups include subclans of U, such as U5, an ancient mitochondrial haplogroup in Europe. K is also worth mentioning as well, on the maternal side, as it's somewhat common amongst Dutch people. As far as the population structure of the Netherlands, a 2013 study published in the European Journal of Human Genetics found that there was three major clans, north and south, east and west, and the middle band and the rest of the country. 
Some have speculated that this North-South divide was driven by the cultural division between the predominantly Catholic South and the Protestant North, yet a 2020 study found that this division is much more historic than this. Although later religious influences could have compounded it, the river systems of the Netherlands probably were the main driver of this split, such as the Lower Rhine and Val rivers, serving as natural barriers, with the south of these rivers perhaps influenced more by the Celts and the Romans, and the north more influenced by Germanic and Scandinavian peoples. Unsurprisingly as well when looking at the map, the Netherlands has ancestry from its border countries of Germany and Belgium. With this ancestry in general declining, the further you move away from these borders. Overall though, the Netherlands has had various genetic influences on it down through history, with steppe ancestry, Germanic influences, and then some Danish ancestry from the Vikings, some notable examples. Like I said earlier, the Dutch language and the English language are quite closely related, but are the Dutch people and the English people closely related as well? Well, to find out, please click here. Thanks for watching. If you would like to vote for the video topics I make videos on, please check out my Patreon page, I'll put a link below. Please also subscribe and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.